Organizational Physics 101. I'm Lex Sisney. I'm going to be your host in this series of foundational videos. The purpose of these videos is to teach you the principles of how your business works so that you can create breakthrough levels of performance. The purpose of organizational physics is to help you answer four big questions. Now, every leader is asking these questions in their own way at one time or another. And sometimes we're asking ourselves all four questions at once. These questions fall into different categories, success, management, strategy, and execution. When it comes to success, you're asking the question, how do I drive more success? How do I have more happiness? And how do I help my team to have the same? When you're reflecting on management, you're asking, how can I manage it all more easily? What should I do in this situation? How do I build and maintain a high-performing team? But when you're reflecting on your strategy, you're thinking about what should I do next and why? And when you're thinking about execution, it's kind of like this. How do we do it all more quickly? Well, organizational physics provides the answers to these questions in a way that's incredibly unique. The answers, as you'll see, are timeless and universal. They were always true. They will always be true. The framework of organizational physics is born out of real-world experience. I was fortunate enough to be the co-founder and CEO of one of the country's fastest growing technology companies. And in that experience, I really learned that the methods and models that got me to one level of success did not scale up. And I made every mistake you can possibly make. Things got so bad that I finally broke down and reached out for help from some organizational scaling experts, Itchak Adizis and Sunil Davidi from the Adizis Institute. And they were the first people to really teach me to take a systematic approach to organizational transformation. My team and I in that early growth business used some systematic principles and we quickly transformed that business. So today it's the world's largest organization of its type. That experience of struggling to figure out what to do and then finding the answers really inspired a passion in me to go find other methods and models I called infinitely scalable. That meant they would apply to me, my marriage, my family, my management team, or the different businesses I got involved with. And I'm happy to say that those principles can be found within organizational physics. Organizational physics also leverages certain aspects of management theory. And uniquely, we apply laws of physics to organizational transformation. Now, that might seem really weird at first. Physics, that only applies to the physical world. Physics should not apply, does not apply to human-based organizations, right? Well, it turns out, if you know what to look for, that physics provides very powerful metaphors to understand what's happening in your life, in your team, in your organization and what to do about it to create the breakthrough levels of performance that you're seeking. So while physics does apply to the physical world, obviously, we use those same principles and apply them to your organization. And just as gravity is not just a good idea, it's the law, the same principles that you're going to learn about your organization are how things really work. If you understand how things really work, then like a talented doctor, you can heal the patient at the cause of the disease, not just try to mask symptom after symptom. The the approach we take in organizational physics is very collaborative. We're not consultants that write reports and throw them over the wall. We always work top down. And the reason is that's just the most effective way to create change. If you can change the mind of the general, then you change the pace and the direction of the entire army. And we always take a systems thinking approach. A systems thinking approach means rather than being reductionist, you look at how the system behaves in its totality, including its interactions with the environment. And from that vantage point, you can tell what the system needs to create new levels of performance. Here's some of the outcomes that we typically see when we're engaging with our clients. The first thing we notice often is that the leader or the founder kind of feels trapped. They have the experience, much like I did early in my career, but that the business was not able to scale beyond me. No matter how much I tried to delegate or decentralize, I always seem to be the bottleneck. We help founders and leaders shift out of that trap into what we call founder's freedom. One of the first things we always do is help the founder to identify his or her genius zone. Your genius zone is a combination of your unique talents with a driving sense of purpose. And when you're working from your genius zone, you're highly creative, engaged, and powerful. Here's a secret. If you can design your business around your genius zone, that's how you unlock the most enterprise value. Now, of course, if you're going to do that, that requires that you surround yourself with others who are a genius where you're not. So by putting the founder into his or her genius zone, we create opportunities for others to be a genius in their own respective areas. It's very powerful and a lot of fun for everyone involved. The other thing we notice in clients that we work with who are typically growing very quickly is there's a lot of incomplete priorities. That is, there's a lot of things to do, but no clear defining prioritization. 
And that shifts working with organizational physics into a very clear, committed strategy where the top key strategic moves are known and executed on. We also notice in our clients before we start working with them that they've lost sight of who they are and why they exist. There's kind of the sense of amnesia happening in the corporate culture. And that shifts towards a renewal of the foundational story. What's the compelling story here in this business? Why do we exist? What's important about what we do? What I found in my own life is that the story creates a reality, not the other way around. We also see that there's sometimes high internal friction or entropy. It's hard to make decisions and get things accomplished quickly. And that shifts into a mode of very fast execution with low friction. We also often see sales, but low or limited profits. And that will shift into increasing sales with increasing profits so that the business can be sustainable over time. And the last thing we often see is that the team is kind of showing up like a B or C team. And it's usually not the fault of the individual team members. What's happening is that the environment is misaligned. So by shifting the environment, aligning the vision and values, the structure, the decision making and implementation processes, and getting people into roles where they can really thrive, that team starts to show up as the A team. So I invite you to dive into these videos. I wanna say one last thing. It's not enough that you understand the principles of organizational physics. Your team needs to understand them too. And organizational physics makes it easy for everyone on the team to see the same thing, to speak the same language, and to know what to do next. So watch these videos with your team. Enjoy.